Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off the Ball Network. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing this whole Ben Simmons situation, him being ruled out from game four. And more importantly, I would like to debunk some of the narratives and some of the contradicting things that people have been saying about Ben Simmons recently about this situation. And, you know, just get my overall initial thoughts and opinions on the entire uh, scenario overall, right? But before we get started with today's episode, if you are new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five star rating like comment and subscribe turn on post notification give us a nice review on apple Podcasts and spotify but without further ado let's get started with today's episode because we got a very intriguing topic to discuss today obviously here recently as of late it was reported by shams charania that ben simmons is going to be ruled out for game four and ideally we more than likely will not see him for the remainder of this playoff series and this season overall and you know with that being said that's obviously been a big blow and disappointment to NBA fans just in general right you know with Ben Simmons fresh off of a playoff blunder where he displayed you know the second worst free throw percentage in a playoff setting in NBA history and there being questions about you know his overall development in his you know short tenure in the NBA so far there's been a lot of things that have led to the criticism of Ben Simmons here as of late right and you know anytime you see a marquee player in today's league want to leave the original situation that they were either traded to or drafted into you're gonna get some pushback from some nba fans right whether it's that you know the team that you know you originally left or you know some just some outsiders who like to spectate the game or even you know media personalities there's always going to be somebody that is going to have something negative to say about that said player right we've seen it throughout the years with james harden we saw it with kevin durant we've even seen it in free agency you don't even have to be a person that demands a trade if you leave your original team just to go join another team like you rightfully are able to do in free agency there's going to be people that are also going to have issues with that right and you know with that being said i feel like there's definitely been a bias towards ben simmons for this entire situation right now granted ben simmons has a game that i feel like more than likely isn't going to draw him a, a big fan base in terms of you know nba fans just because his game overall is a mixture of you know 90s basketball with a hint of you know today's modernized game with you know the bigger point guards point centers and things of that nature he kind of fits into both of those molds right and you know with that being said with him coming off of such a bad playoff outing against the atlanta hawks him being one of the reasons why you know the philadelphia 76ers have not advanced to an easter conference finals given you know they lost to the atlanta hawks last postseason ben simmons has definitely been ruled public enemy number one but i feel like in this situation dealing with his back injury people have just not looked at it from a realistic standpoint now we have to think ben simmons has not played basketball all year he was not going to play for the philadelphia 76ers so with that being said it's on daryl morey and the rest of that front office to figure out a destination that they can send him to they no longer are going to have to deal with him and you know his displeasures with the organization and the franchise overall and more importantly they can bring in a more adequate piece that's going to be conducive to winning right next to joel Embiid, be able to help out tyrese maxey and tobias harris and you know george Yang and matisse Thibel and the rest of this philadelphia 76ers ball club help them win a championship and let alone more importantly contend in the eastern conference that we all know is extremely deep and you know is filled with a ton of contending teams and you know with that being said ben simmons we understand he has not played for the entirety of the year right now granted since he was traded so late in the season there was going to be a chance of him not playing up to his standards right just because such a long layoff period with him not playing a game between the last postseason and this year right and you know you we hope to see him you know start that redemption tour in brooklyn right from the moment you know he got traded in february but unfortunately ended up suffering from a gruesome back injury around that time that he was traded now the thing that a lot of people tend to forget is that ben simmons actually has a history of back issues right a lot of people don't understand that ben simmons is a guy who has now been dealing with his fourth back injury in the last two seasons now when you put that into perspective when you see how some of these injuries have affected guys like james harden who's been dealing with you know the hamstring injury for you know the last couple of years 
and Kawhi Leonard with some of his nagging injuries. You want to be very careful about, you know, just sending these guys back onto an NBA floor, and, you know, just protecting them from themselves. And I think in this situation, Ben Simmons, whether it was his decision or, you know, the organization's decision, either way, we should not be criticizing Ben Simmons, a guy who obviously has had a history of back issues and is in the midst of dealing with his fourth back injury in the last two seasons. We should not be criticizing him for not being able to play NBA basketball because of that issue. And let's be honest about this entire situation, right? We understand Ben Simmons individually wants to play. He's done everything and gone through the necessary processes in order for him to, you know, try to make an attempt at playing NBA basketball. And on top of that, we, we've been hearing reports about his confidence, you know, continually rising. So that kind of dispels some of the mental health statements that we've been hearing here as of late. And then on top of that, when you look at how the Brooklyn Nets front office has, you know, talked about Ben Simmons throughout this entire scenario, they obviously want him on the basketball floor. So when we put those two things together, right, I think the real reason why Ben Simmons isn't playing has a lot to do with Rich Paul. Rich Paul is protecting Ben Simmons from himself and this Brooklyn Nets front office. Because I think over the past two seasons, it's quite clear the Brooklyn Nets front office, they've shown and displayed that they cannot really handle you know, tough situations and make tough decisions. We saw that with the Kyrie Irving situation. They went back on their words saying at first that they weren't gonna allow any part-time participants. And then, you know, halfway through the season, they went back on their word and they obviously brought Kyrie Irving back into the mix. And then, you know, just handling some of the other situations and, you know, just the attention, the attention around this entire organization. It, it seems like a, it, in most cases, a lot of the representatives aren't on the same page for whatever reason. And I think, you know, when you take all that stuff into consideration, the fact that Ben Simmons hasn't played NBA basketball for 10 to 11 months, the fact that, you know, he's on a new ball club and he hasn't built any continuity with his teammates and he's dealing with a back injury that, you know, could be a lot worse than what we really think it is. I think Rich Paul is making the right decision by, you know, not allowing Ben Simmons to play NBA basketball right now. He's protecting him from himself and the Brooklyn Nets organization. What I find really interesting about this entire situation is Ben Simmons is not the only player out of the NBA playoffs right now who was rumored to come back and has just made the decision that he's not going to be able to play. There is a guy by the name of Michael Porter Jr. who plays for the Denver Nuggets who also has a history of back issues and was expected to come back in March, even earlier than Ben Simmons. Dude, he has not suited up since January, I believe. And then if you want to go through the line, we can continue to go through the line. We can talk about guys like Kawhi Leonard, who has been off since last year. And there have been speculations about him possibly coming back to postseason. But we're not going to criticize Kawhi Leonard. We're not going to criticize, you know, Jamal Murray. We're not going to criticize Michael Porter Jr. I haven't heard any criticism of that, about those guys deciding to not want to play due to an injury. But, you know, it seems like Ben Simmons and Zion Williamson seem to be outliers in this entire situation. It seems like we pick and choose when players are in the right and when they're in the wrong. And if we're being completely honest, there weren't too many pros with Ben Simmons coming back in, in this series, right? You know, towards the end of the series, you know, game four, when the series is already decided more than likely, you know, no team in NBA history has came back from down 3-0. We've seen 3-1 be done before, but when you're going up against a Boston Celtics defense that, you know, is the best defense in the entire NBA, and offensively, you know, they have the game plan and, the, you know, the uh, personnel to be able to beat a team like the Brooklyn Nets. Also noting that Ben Simmons is a guy who has had some deficiencies offensively, and you're trying to bring him back in a series where he has never Never played with some of these guys on this basketball court and he also hasn't played NBA basketball for the entire year on top of the fact that Kyrie Irving has noted in this series one of the components in their struggles this postseason has to do with the fact that you know they have not been able to build continuity but yet we are rushing Ben Simmons to come back in game four and try to you know alleviate some of the bleeding that the Boston Celtics have been providing none of these things are adding up a lot of these statements have just been so contradicting and I just do not understand it. For Reggie Miller to come out and say that Ben Simmons has no firepower because he's unable to suit up for game four is blasphemous. He's literally tried throughout this entire process to get back on the floor as soon as possible. And when we first heard the reports about, you know, Ben Simmons being injured, dealing with that back issue, start to get more insight on the severity of the issue. There were public statements of former doctors giving their opinions on, you know, the severity of Ben Simmons situation and giving insight on how long it really takes for an injury like, like that to, you know, heal from. There was a, a doctor that was originally a, a member of the Orlando Magic medical team. He noted Ben Simmons is more than likely going to have to, you know, take some epidural shots, which he did 
or he's gonna have to undergo surgery because the injury that he's going through it takes a lot more time for him to recover from so with that being said we've gotten concrete evidence as to why you know ben simmons probably shouldn't come back in the end there's a much bigger risk of him re-aggravating an injury or undergoing an injury that might even be even worse and more importantly another anomaly in this entire situation could be the fact that ben simmons uh, let's say hypothetically speaking he comes back in game four gives you 15 to 20 minutes and in that span time he ends up re-aggravating the injury and he ends up undergoing an even worse injury then everyone's gonna be talking about how he should have never played the series was over you know it was stupid to bring him back so i mean the viewpoints on this entire topic you know they've been very inconsistent in, in my opinion and they've been really unrealistic and one more final note before we close out today's episode if steve nash has not been able to integrate an offensive scheme that is going to be conducive to winning and be beneficial to kevin durant and kyrie irving two guys that have notably been struggling in this series against one of the better defensive teams in the entire nba and they're deemed some of the most skilled players in nba history and some of the better scores and isolation guys in nba history why would we expect ben simmons to be able to thrive in a situation like that but hey you guys let me know what y'all think about this here in the comment section thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode with me here on the ball fake podcast if you're new to our youtube channel or you're listening on apple Podcasts or spotify make sure to give us a five star rating like comment and subscribe turn on post notifications and give us a nice review on apple Podcasts and spotify but besides that it's your boy nicey chunga you're listening to the ball fake podcast and we out praise god